This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is all on the sulfur cycle. It's part of the biogeochemical cycle series. And we're looking at the fundamental components, sinks and fluxes of the sulfur cycle and how this element is transported and moved around our planet in different spheres and quantities. This is the Earth Science Classroom. The element sulfur has a mass of 32 and it has 16 electrons and 16 protons and it has 23 different isotopes and it has four stable isotopes being 32 33 34 and 36 but the main one we're looking at is the sulfur 32 or 16 the one we get on the periodic table and this element is highly reactive not only does it react with other elements to make compounds and mixtures, but also it has a range of oxidation states from minus two to plus six, so eight different states. So it is highly reactive, and it comes in different variations in the cycle. You have the basic elementary sulfur, you've got sulfur dioxide, SO2, sulfate, SO4, two negative, and hydrogen sulfide, H2S and the last one sulfuric acid H2SO4 and these come in different quantities around the cycle and one of the unique traits of sulfur is its yellow coloring of the element and also its unique smell which is like rotten eggs. Sulfur has five main sinks or pools or reservoirs. The first is the lithosphere Second is the ocean, third is soil, fourth is the atmosphere, and fifth is biomass. Now in terms of quantities, the lithosphere is by far the majority holder or storage of sulfur in the cycle. Then comes the ocean, then comes soil and biomass, and last but not least is the atmosphere. Our sulfur cycle begins in the majority or the largest quantity of sulfur in the sink or reservoir, which is the lithosphere, the upper mantle and the crust, both the ocean floor and the terrestrial continents. The majority of the sulfur is held or stored in evaporite rocks and sedimentary rocks, mostly ocean sediments and deposits, and these turn into both limestone, dollarstone and gypsum in various stages of lithification and sedimentation on the ocean floor. Now how this gets there is through both the oceans and also through weather and erosion on terrestrial surfaces to then re-enter through the oceans. And the main storage of sulfur is, is the sulfate mineral group, which comes in two varieties, sulfides S2 and sulfates is SO4 2 negative. And once you have the storage of sulfur in the rocks, you have tectonic uplift bringing rocks to the surface to then be weathered and eroded through the elements and also carried up through magmatic material to eventually be released through volcanism on the Earth's surface, both on the continents, through volcanoes and through deep sea ocean floor hydrothermal vents called black smokers. The oceans play a vital role in the storage and the flux of sulfur within the sulfur cycle and the addition of sulfur into the oceans comes through direct deposition or fallout from the atmosphere. You also get dissolved sulfate from the atmosphere into the oceans as SO4 2 negative. You also get the dissolved and the deposition of DMS dimethyl sulfide and you also have the addition of any sulfur that's been broken down through chemical weathering and erosion of any terrestrial minerals or rocks containing sulfur that are going to flow back into the oceans through any kind of stream flow, groundwater flow or any kind of surface runoff. So the uplift and the climate are going to dictate the amount of weathering and erosion that takes place. Also you get soil leaching that's going to take the sulfur back into the groundwater and eventually back into the oceans. So once it's in the oceans we have this inorganic sulfur being actively taken by phytoplankton, by bacteria, and converted into organic sulfur. And these microscopic animals will then produce hydrogen sulfide as a waste product, which would then be used by chemosynthesis or chemoautotrophs on the ocean floor to create their own food and sugars without the presence of sunlight. 
So they would add in the CO2 and oxygen into the H2S, which is hydrogen sulfide, and create their own energy and food. Then you also have the deposition of organic and inorganic sulfur through dead and decaying animals in the ocean and inorganic through hydrogen sulfide being deposited onto the ocean floor and forming sedimentation to go back into the sulfides and sulfates and the sedimentary rocks and form sedimentary rocks. And you also have the addition of dissolved water with sulfur in subduction zones, taking the dissolved water and bringing it down with subducting slabs and plates deep down into the mantle where it would be melted and rejoin the rock cycle as magma, but containing sulfur as one of the volatiles, the gas component of magma. The atmosphere plays an important role in moving and transferring as a flux sulfur throughout the cycle. It's not the biggest sink or pool, it's mainly just to have chemical reactions within sulfur's gas form, which includes some gases such as sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, carbon disulfide, carboxyl sulfide, dimethyl sulfide, last but not least, sulfuric acid. Now, it all starts with both COS and SO2. Now, these are the more common gases in the atmosphere in terms of percent weight. Now sulfur gets into the atmosphere through the dissolved sulfur in DMSP being released through bacteria as DMS and the sulfur being released by soils which is called volatilization. Now human activity plays a vital role in the sulfur cycle in regards to any combustion of fossil fuels and hydrocarbons that will contain sulfur and this is released in the atmosphere as a potentially harmful pollutant and you get sulfuric acid which is a secondary pollutant which is basically means that the sulfur is there but then reacts with extra elements and molecules in the atmosphere to create a different molecule in this case sulfuric acid which really puts the acid in acid rain and lowers the pH so wherever it is deposited or precipitates this sulfuric acid, it's going to affect the ecosystem, affect the ecology, affect the chemistry of both the oceans and the soil and the land, and basically cause damage to the environment. So this has been a hot topic for many decades, but you have the oxidized sulfur dioxide can go into hydrogen sulfide, which can then go into the oceans and be deposited can also get direct what's called fallout or deposition of that sulfur from the atmosphere into both the soils and also the oceans. And this is called both wet and dry deposition. Now, as listed, a lot of these gases are released not only from the soils, but also from the decay of organic material, or it is oxidation from a certain present gas, or it is also from the release of bacteria and algae, both from the oceans and the soil, as a waste product to then recycle this sulfur into the system. The soil and the biomass are an important sink or pool for sulfur. As with the other biogeochemical cycles, like nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon, and the water cycle, including the sulfur, you have this cycle of nutrients that are key to the growth and health and existence of the biosphere, of any living flora and fauna, any organic compounds, organic matter is going to be utilizing sulfur in various quantities to promote growth and health. For example, in trees, the leaves, the chloroplasts, which are in the chlorophyll, which is used in photosynthesis, is going to use sulfur to stay healthy and maintain that function of taking sunlight and adding oxygen and CO2 and producing glucose and sugars for growth, which is a vital part of our ecosystem. And then it also is involved in the effectiveness of nitrogen metabolism through the roots and legumes in the soil. So organic sulfur, and the production of organic sulfur is critical in the soil, mainly the topsoil, the O and the A horizon, for the 
ability for biomass to maintain growth and health within the ecosystem. Now, how does this organic compounds of sulfur get there? Well, you have to assimilate from inorganic compounds, which are going to be from the weather and erosion of rocks and sulfur and sulfate mineral group elements and rocks and minerals. And that will be there as the storage for the bacteria to then assimilate the inorganic sulfur into organic sulfur, which means to really add carbon. And you also have the ability for the plants then to assimilate this organic carbon in the form of phosphates, which is SO4 to negative, which is the main type of sulfur used or taken up by the biomass. You can also get inorganic compounds coming from weather and erosion of the surface rocks and the movement of sulfur through the water cycle to then be deposited in different areas to and add to the topsoil the amount of sulfur. So you have this chemical reaction, either reduction to remove the oxygen or oxidation to add oxygen into phosphate to create this organic sulfur in which the biomass is going to utilize. So in general, the sulfur cycle is the transportation and modification of sulfur from the inorganic compounds through the sedimentary rocks, through sedimentation, through ocean deposits, and converting this into organic compounds within the soil for sulfate uptake of plants, or through uplift and the release of sulfur through volcanism into the atmosphere, also through weather and erosion, and the release of sulfur through soil volatilization, and the combination of both hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon within the atmosphere to produce different sulfur compounds and different sulfur mixtures in which will be deposited and which is called fallout into both the soil, back into the biomass, and also into the oceans in terms of dissolved sulfate and also DMS, dimethyl sulfide. And how this dissolved sulfur is going to be used by the phytoplankton in the oceans as it is also used as by the bacteria in the soils and be converted from inorganic back into organic and then back into inorganic again as waste in terms of hydrogen sulfide and this will be again recycled into the ocean floor as deposition both in terms of decomposing matter and inorganic sulfur back into the sedimentation and back again to complete the cycle within the sedimentary rock layers of the lithosphere which is the upper mantle and the crust. So the cycling of sulfur is not only important for the oceanic ecosystems and marine life, but also in terms of terrestrial ecosystems and flora and fauna in terms of the soil health, in terms of soil quality, in terms of the amount of sulfate that can be uptaken or used or assimilated by plants, vegetation, and the constant cycling of sulfur through sulfur dioxide and COS in the atmosphere through volcanism and large tectonic activity in terms of a larger, longer time scale. And the combination of sulfur with nitrogen, with the water cycle and also the carbon cycle is absolutely intriguing. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.